Thank you very much. So we are talking about the multi-visitation condition anomaly this month, this morning. And this is part of our parameters we are using. We're talking about, about agriculture and food security. And from the last time we said that we're talking about food security or uh, agriculture, we need some element that we have to put together so that we can be able to be able to, to bring out analysis, to bring out decision. Because without all those elements, we cannot know whether the, the vegetation is doing well, whether the plants we are seeing is a is a crop or not. So from this morning, we are going to talk about the vegetation condition anomaly. So what does that mean? The vegetation landscape responds to long-term environmental drivers such as the AE Nino Southern Oscillation. Those one is a phenomenon we know in Brazil a long time ago. But climate change requires the calculation of standardized anomalies Sundance anomalies subtract the long-term mean from a, an observation of interest and then divide the result by long-term standard deviation, thus removing seasonal variability and highlighting change related to long-term driver. The description of this uh, notebook is almost the same as we started since long time. So we are going here to calculate the monthly standards NDVR anomaly for any given time period and rely on the Africa 30 meter resolution and the via climatology product to define the baseline vegetation condition, Sentinel-2 and land sites eight or nine are used to calculate the monthly mean NDVR for the time period of interest. The standardized anomaly is then calculated as this formula, we have the X minus M over S, where the X is the monthly mean of NDVI the M is the long-term mean, and S is the long-term standardized deviation. So these are the following steps that we are going to take during the, our, our presentation. We define an area of interest and determine period to calculate anomaly for our area of study. We load the cloud mass Sentinel-2 and Landsat Sentinel data. We process the satellite data so that we can have one continuous uh, and noise free time series of NDVI. We load the Africa NDVI climatology products. We load the Africa crop mask for the region. We mask, we mask the NDVI time series and climatology data set using the crop mask and calculate standards NDVI anomalies plots. The end of the anomaly then, and we plot the NDVI anomaly. To start, we know we have now to load the package so that we can be able to run our analysis. Okay, those are the loading of the package of Python. We know it, we import the OS, we import the data pool, the geopenders, the map plot, if we have the NumP, the ASRE, the SRA, all those elements we have to be load so that we can be able to perform our analysis. We have the data Africa tools also have to be to be loaded to be loaded. And we set up the dask cluster. Dask cluster be used to better manage memory use and condition and conduct the analysis in parallel for an introduction to using dask with digital edge Africa. What does that mean? You know, when working, we have to manage our memory of the machine we are using, okay? So that we can be able to work with Digital Edge Africa platform and use the notebook. So for that, we start, we know that all the, the system here have been stopped in running. So we start running them. So we're running, we run the first element, the second. So we load, when we are going to load now. And from there, we know this, this star will become one. That is the first running of our, of our package. We set up the dust cluster, we run it. We create the local dust cluster. 
is it it has been created or my this red element that this is what we want to create has been created okay we connect now to data cube activate the data cube database we provide which provides functionality for loading and displaying store edge observation data we run it we run the data cube those are the following cells that are important in the analysis of, of our work. We have the latch, the long, the buffer, the time, the resolution, the output, the dash chunk, the output directory, the mean and the non observation. So those are the elements we talk about here. So we put them in this cell so that we can enter and define them so we can be able to activate them. So it have been activated for area of study. We execute this also so that uh, we can know the essence of our study area. We view the selected location. Is it so? We are all known, we are all familiar to this area now, the Batinti in Nigeria. That is in play two states. Okay, that's the area that we have been selected by this for this study. So now we load the, the class max satellite image. Why are we loading the cloud mass satellite images? So that it can be, the image can be free from clouds, okay? So the first step in this analysis is to load in the Landsat 9 and Satellite 2 data for the area of interest we picked. And for the period we want to calculate the NDVI anomalies and standardize anomalies for time, the code below uses the loads add function. Okay, so the load, the code we are going to use here, we are going to use this code, the load add function. The loads to load in data from Landsat 8 and Satellite 2 satellite for the area and time specified for more information. We see the using loads and the notebook in our Glitter Edge Africa platform. Now we are going to create the dictionary query. Is it? We run it. When running it, this will provide us the data cube loads parameters. Okay. And what is going to give us? That is it. Now we load the satellite data now. So this is where we are. After loading the satellite data, this is it. We have Landsat 8, Landsat 9. Here is Sentinel 2. Okay. We create the crop mask using the Africa crop land essence. Why are we creating the crop mask? You know, all the vegetation are not crop. Okay. So we have to extract our crop mask from our study area so that we can be able to really give a precise decision, give a precise information on that area based on the crop mask. So we are, we are running it. This is it, the crop mass of our study area. So all the green area showing that those areas are where we grow crop, okay? There are some other detail on where they are white, but they are not crop. It may be vegetation, 
there may be urban, there may be water, it doesn't concern, you need the crop mass. Yeah. Okay. Now we, we are going to do the processing of the satellite data that we, we looked at before. That is the Landsat and the Sentinel-2. So here we I'm perform- sorry, Let me interrupt here before you continue. Yes. Um, uh, Yes. One of the changes that we made to the DA Africa tools is for the calculate indices function. We did change the parameter for whether you're using Landsat or Sentinel 2 data to that satellite mission um, yeah. key keyword argument. And now the choices for that is if you're using um, Landsat data, you specify the satellite mission to LS. So I guess for the second one, you change, <coughs> sorry. So for, I've changed it already to, it was collection is now satellite submission. So as to for the, for the Sentinel, and I, then, I, I, are you following me? For the yes. Landsat, we've changed it to collection from, to satellite mission. Are we trying this? Yes. Yes. So it's no longer C2, it's LS for Landsat data. And okay. S2 for setting and tool data. Okay, LS. Yes. Thank you. So that was the challenges we had before. Okay, thank you now. It's complete. Thank you very much, Victoria. You're welcome. Yeah. So we can continue. How we perform a number of steps to get the satellite data into the format on the format we need for calculating an NDVI anomaly. We renamed the near infrared two band in Sentinel two to near infrared no more two. So the calculate we calculate the indices function, and with this one we allow us to calculate the NDVI using the near infrared two. We calculate the NDVI on both Landsat and Sentinel two data. Then we concatenate the two time series together. Now that we are we are going to have a continuous time series of NDVI. You can clean the time series by removing data that is outside the range of zero to one and minimize the impact of noise or the misses clouds by running a temporal rolling pin feature with a small window size. We then calculate the mean NDVI for each month in the anomaly time period, that X. We mask the mean NDVI data set using the crop mask. So this is what we are going to do when processing our satellite data. We rename, we calculate the NDVI. We now have a continuous time series of NDVI. And also we clean the time series by removing data that is outside our area of our range of zero to one. We, clean, we remove the noises. Now we calculate the mean of NDVI for each month. Now, after then, at the end, we mask the mean and the data set using the crop mask. So, they are giving us a note that this cell will take several minutes to run. Okay, so we have you run it. We run it. Okay. So we drop the band red and near infrared. We are told that it will take some time. So it's taking it. We wish we have the such patients. So I hope we all understand why we are we are doing we use this opportunity to give more explanations of what we are doing for those that have not been there before. I hope so. That's 
is a, a is a training on agriculture and uh, food security. When talking about food security, we are talking about crop that we all use for our foods. Okay, so we want to know in the area of our study the health of the plants. What how is the production is going to look like? What are the elements that we consider so that we can be able to bring out an information that will let us know that whether the area we are working on is a food unsecure or is, a, is a, an area that is uh, secure. So what do we do? First of all, we did the technology so that we take care of the type of vegetation we have, how the vegetation is growing on that area, the leaves, how is it done? Okay, from which as it starts, how is the color? And as it grows down, how is the color of the leaves is going to be like? And also related to all those elements to the rain. Without the rain, there's no vegetative growth. Okay, so the rain allows the vegetation to grow. And also when we are talking about rain, it should not be more than what the plant needed. If the rain is too much, the plants are going to die. So we are going to study all those areas and see. That's why we did the rainfall anomaly to see how the rainfall from 30 years, because most of the time when we are doing search, you take 30 years as a as a period of a study. So we did that, that allow us to get the anomaly of those periods and the uh, anomaly data of those rainfall data. We calculated mean we did everything because we got it. Okay. After that, now we are going to talk about the vegetation, the NDVI. Okay. So we know what NDVI mean. Okay, it's our, this thing has, has finished. We run the next step. So this is the NDVI that we get from, from each month for the anomaly time period average over the area of interest. So while we are using that, we get to the spatial mean for each time step in the GSN DVI data sets. Okay. Now, all these data will be converted to average NDVI frame of a data set to have a data frame. Okay. So this is it. In 2017, 1st January, 31st of January, 2017. 17, this is the value of the NDVI. And we move to the, to the May. And this is the value we get for the NDVI. Now we plot the NDVI monthly mean over time for the anomaly time period. Is it we plot the NDVI monthly mean over time for the anomaly time period? This is it. You can see that we have January 2017. July 2017, January 2018, July 2018, January 2019, July 2019, and July 2019, and 2020, 2020 also, and 2021, January 2021. 
and the call this is the monthly mean NDVI from 2017 to 2020. We notice in January, you can see that the vegetation growth or uh, all the vegetation we have over there, then calculating them, either they are dried or they, they are not there. Okay. But in July, we can notice that there's an increase in the NDI, NDVI value. You can notice when we project this to this sometime, we can say this is the area. 2017 is about 0.45 NDVI. In January, when we come here, is 0.20. Does not mean that there's no vegetation, there's vegetation, but they are dry. Okay. Here also in 2018, you notice the same, the same increase increase 2019. In January, the same level. In July, there's increase. Okay. So what does that mean? That means that during the periods of July, you can notice that the vegetation growth is, is high. Is it it? You notice the vegetation growth is high in July. Yes. So after then, after having the monthly mean of NDVI, we are going to load the Africa NDVI climatology. Now, you can remember that we gave a formula up as we started. So, but there are some, some challenges that is has been explained here. They said, due to the inconsistent data availability of Landsat 5 over Equatorial Africa and due to persistent cloud coverage over these same regions, the quality of the long-term NDVI baseline is poor in some parts of Africa. We recommend not using, relying on the NDVI climatology product in location where the clear observation count is less than 20 to 30 observations. Okay, so below the standard deviation layers are prone to data artifacts owing to temporal smoothing operation performing poorly or sparse data and the residual cloudy pixel not being sufficiently averaged out by a decent volume of input data. Okay. So you can see here, the function to get the NDVI community data for a specific monthly, this is the code we put down. We listed the months, number of observations that we need. Okay. We are going to get the NDVI climatology data for each month in a year for a separate data set. Do it. Now we define the NDVI climatology mean. That is the NDVI climatology. The NDVI climatology standard, that's the NDVI climatology. Standard deviation. Okay. Now we are going to calculate the standardized anomalies. By subtracting the long-term mean and uh, dividing by the long-term standard deviation. Okay. 
So we are going to use the formula that we have the X minus seven over S that we got over at, uh, at the beginning as the standard anomalies. So we have the X, the M and the S. Okay. We have the NDVI anomaly a climatology mean, the NDVI climatology standard, the output data type, As it's now we are going we are going to plot the average standardized anomaly. Okay, we plot the average standardized anomaly. Uh, before then, let us explain slightly this uh, information that we have. The NDVI in January mean climatology. The NDVI January standard deviation climatology. The end of year January 2017 mean and 2000 January 2017 standard standards anomaly. We explain. We know already, we said it by looking at the legends. This is the NDVI. Okay. We move from 0, 0, 0, 0, 0.005, 0, 010, 0, 0.015, 0, 0.020. This color means that this is the value we are having for our NDVI, okay, around this area. And also we have, sorry. Sorry, sorry, sorry. So we are 0 0.25. That is the, those patches of yellow that we have in January. Those are the area that gets a, a high value in that area based on the range at which we are working here, zero to 0 0.25. So in January mean climatology, this is what we get. Here is the January standard deviation climatology. Okay, you can see the value that we get, the 0 0.05. And there are some black black patches that are 0, 0, that is. This is in end of year, January 2017 mean. Here is climatology mean climatology. This is the NDVI January 2007 mean. This is the value we are having here. The NDVI from minus three to three. Okay. So this color that is dark brown is minus three. So all the dark brown that we have here on our standardized anomaly are having those value. And the one that are green, there's increase in the NDVI that is one, one and some, some patches of dark that can be two, okay? And now on our own year, on in January, 2017 mean, we have the NDVI from zero to 0 0.8, that is the mean of our NDVI of that area, okay? So it's the same periods, but they are not the same data. That's why the, you can see the legend are not the same, okay? This is the NDVI mean in January. This is the NDVI standard, standard anomaly of NDVI in 2017 January. So we plot the average on that anomaly. Below the special mean is taken so we can present the monthly anomaly average across the area of interest. This is the standard NDVI anomaly across our area of interest. Okay, those are the what we got here in 2000. 
17. January, so that is NVIDIA anomaly. Right, it's here, okay, it's good. Now below we plot a bar graph that we show the average NVIDIA anomaly across the area of interest. Yeah, this is the bar that show the average NVIDIA anomaly across the area of interest. Okay. From 2017 to 2020. This is below, is minus one to zero. Those are the reds. And we have from zero to 15, those are, are in blue. And these are the dates where those value of red and blue corresponding to. In 2017, January, so the standard deviation from monthly mean that we have is between minus 1.5 to zero. In 2017, that is July, You see have value that are missed. You can have value from minus 1.5 or let's say minus 0 0.5 to 0 0.25 digits 2017 July. 2018, we have the same issue here. So the blue, are positive in value of a standard deviation monthly mean. So those results, we are going to save them as a S, as CSV format. Why do we want to save it as CSV format so that we can make, we can make use of it, we can export it and use it in another in another on another platform. So the NDVI normally defined as an average NDVI, defined the match, the special mean anomalies. So we have the NDVI, this is the CSV format. Okay, that we are going to save. So this is where we are concerning the presentation on the meditation anomalies and the monthly mean. So this work is continue after the phenology, the rainfall, we were talking about the anomaly, the vegetation anomaly. The next step is the soil moisture. And at the end, we go for the crop health. That's when we allow us to combine all those elements and be able to criticize and give whether this area will produce more foods or not. I think if there's any question. Thank you very much. Left to Ken. Thank you so much, Professor Yajemi. Just uh, the small step where things changed was cell number eight. Uh, just yes. ask. Yes, what, number eight. What changed? No. Mm. That's, this, uh, oh, this is where they do the changes. You know, it's not here we did the changes. We started the changes here. No, for the script, the old one. The old the one. Old one. OK, OK. Uh -huh. the old one, so we talk about the, sorry, 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 sorry. It's fine, it's fine, it's fine. I think uh, Victoria was trying to explain the this because yes. uh, the participants would like to access this notebook. And maybe uh, try try is this. A, is yes. the ten number ten? Aha. Uh -huh. Is number ten? Actually, we were using collection S two okay. for Sentinel two. We use collection C two for 
Landsat. Okay. Now, in the script of Digital Earth Africa, I think they have changed it in their data group and is now satellite underscore mission. CS2 for Sentinel 2 and the satellite underscore mission LS not C2 anymore for Landsat. Thank you so much, yeah, Jamie. And I think we have an update on the on the GitHub. Thank so you very much. We welcome any questions for Professor Yajemi. Hello. Yes, hello. So um, thank you very much for the good presentation. I have, uh, it's a, I think it's a reminder of the use of masking because we we do mask the at the end of the of the programs we mask the data what is the use of masking and also uh, on the on the standard deviation on the uh, anomaly the standard deviation on the mean and the standard deviation of the anomaly uh, what do they um, uh, mean exactly for I think maybe for the mean it shows maybe there's no crop so it's 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 like zero or next to zero but the standard deviation you can see there are colors of brown and some colors of green so how do you interpret it are you this area is it this area Be below below here yeah this one the second one yeah there the second you see one here yeah here in the mean you see it's orange which i think means uh, there's less vegetation, but here on the on the right side, there's brown and there's also some patches of green. So okay. how would you? Okay, yeah. let, me, let me give you, we go back up so that from there we move down here, right? We start from here. Okay, this is the formula, the X minus M over S. Okay, where we know the M is the long time mean, and S is the long-term standard deviation. Okay, the mean, the other, the first one that you have, that is the uh, yellow and the uh, and the red, is just the mean. Okay, and X is the monthly mean. That is the X. The M is the long-term mean. So that's to obtain the, the last one that we are talking about, the green and those color. Okay, now I understood. You understood now. Yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you. Okay, you're welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Yajemi. And also she asked a question about the masking. So we were trying to explain to her the crop extent is for different regions, Eastern or uh, Western. Does your notebook, have, is it affected? Is uh, my note affected by which one? The, the, the crop extent. Uh, that that area for the crop extent. I think in the previous notebook, there was an area where you go up, slightly up. Uh, there was somewhere where you used to change, but this one is uh, fixed. You can use this notebook for any country. Yes, yes, yes. They have done all the changes. Oh, thank you so much, team, uh, science team. Uh, Bako is quiet. Uh, any question for you, Jamie? No, oh, it's, it's so clear for me. It's so clear for me. Thank you so much. Thank you and so much. I want to thank uh, uh, Yajami for his contribution. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you, sir. Yeah, Yajami now is big man. You remember the training we had in uh, in, in Yami? Now he's an expert. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, have a, I have a question. Although yes, sir. it's not for Mr. Yajami, Yes. Uh, my my question is for Victoria. Um, I was thinking, is 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 a uh, smart data already available on the D Africa Sandbox? Smart for soil moisture uh, <clears throat> and precipitation. Data available on the D Africa Sandbox. Uh, no, we do not have the smart data what we have is the the g let me get you the right name for it 
It's, uh, yeah, the graphs. We have the graphs. Yes. Here the graphs. But yes. um, I, I wanted to generate like a surface model for soil moisture and root zone moisture. Is it possible for us to get the map data? Yeah, I will speak possible? to the rest of the science team and uh, we'll put it in for consideration whether we can index that in. Okay, okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Riyadh Jamie, for the free answer. Okay, today. you're welcome, Yabi. Thank you. So in case there's no question for Yajemi, I think the same topic will be covered in French because I recognize uh, French speaking persons like Tito and others who would like uh, the same in French next week. Uh, 